Make sure you give a heart, a smile, a thumbs up for your favorite character as we welcome them into our virtual experience here. First up, we have Mr. Spike himself. Everyone put your hands together for James Marsters. Hey, guys. Good to hey. see you. Hey, Liz, you're very good at this. You talk really fast and in a way that, that I can understand. Good for you. You know, I try. I have two kids under two, so I have to get it out, and it's got to make sense. Yeah, good job. All right, let's bring our next one out. Everyone's favorite computer teacher, Jenny Calendar herself, Robia Scott. Woo! Yeah. Welcome, welcome. Thank you, Thank you, Liz. I'm so happy to be here, guys. Oh, we're happy to have you. Okay, everybody, next up, we have, we all know her as Slayer Kennedy, Irari Lamon. Yay! Yay! Hey! Come on. <laughs> Hi, guys. Thank you for being here. And I have to say, James, you're right. Liz, you're a pro. Like, you're smooth, you're efficient, you're fast, you get it done. And I understand everything you're saying. You're, you're pretty amazing. Hey, you guys, you know what? I got to show up. This is Buffy the Vampire Slayer. We are so excited to have y'all here. Um, yep, as, is, as are we. Oh, um, yay! Well, we have another Slayer to welcome, you guys. Yes. Amanda, Sarah Hagen. Yeah. Sarah! Hey. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> nice in her house. Happy to have ya. Okay, and everyone, last but certainly not least, Buffy's Demon College roommate, Kathy Newman, Dagny Kerr. Yay! Yay! What's this? What's going on? What's happening there? <laughs> I just needed cardio. I was like, let's get some cardio while I'm here. A little flash dance. <laughs> Quarantine oh, workout. I love it. Totally. Well, we already have so many fan questions coming in. Everyone is so excited about this panel. Um, a lot of people are wanting to know because everyone's binging Buffy right now because what else are you going to do in quarantine? Are any of you guys binging anything specific? Any new TV shows or movies? Uh, like all the time. <laughs> I'm like, I can't even remember what I've watched at this point. I've watched everything. Um, Have you? What's good? Well, I watched a documentary called The Last Dance with yes. uh, about Michael Jordan. Oh, God, it's so good. Um, yeah, it's it's like 10 episodes. And it's about the Chicago Bulls and in the, the prime of their time. Um, wow. But it's really good. I recommend it. Yeah, I just well, I'm watching. Know, I go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> that was so no. long ago. Tiger King was like early quarantine. Oh, oh, was early quarantine. Early, that was EQ. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Was, You're so COVID round one, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're already on phase right. four. <laughs> right. Phase four again. You know, I had never seen. I know I'm like way like behind, but I'd never seen Breaking Bad, and I saw it, and I loved it. Oh, it's so good. That show there is lucky you. That's for sure. Very bingy. <laughs> yeah, I was I'm every time every time you're driving spectrum. around and you see a house with the with the, the tent, don't you wonder what might be going on in there? <laughs> All the time. Oh yeah. <laughs> what is love on the spectrum? It's what a Netflix show? show about it's a dating show uh for people on the oh. autism spectrum. Yes. Okay. And I it's just I just right. fall in love with all of these people because they're just they're they're so out there they're yeah. like everything that mm -hmm. happens to them on a date i've gone through that you know the <laughs> nerves the the mm -hmm. brain freezing up now i can't think of what to say or what are they going to think about me or you can tell they both want to impress is that what you're watching so now yeah it's just so uh it's just so dear and i'm like oh my god i'm just like you oh my god I, oh i felt that too yeah it's oh, yeah. it's really cute yeah i recommend it that's Netflix, right? Yeah, yeah. Cool. What about you, Robia? Are you binging anything? No, I'm not really. I got rid of my Netflix. Ooh, because, ah. you know, I know. It <laughs> eats too much of my life. I know. <laughs> I, I kind of swim a little bit of a different direction. I'm trying to use my time in a way that does not involve binging. So that's just me. But let me tell you, when you're not in front of Netflix, you get a lot of hours of your life back, y'all. What about are it. you about doing? Yeah. Meditating yeah, like four hours? hours I'm meditating. <laughs> I don't want to. I'm writing. I'm doing things to nourish my body, soul, and spirit, James. 
Man, hats off to you. Wow. Sorry, I don't I don't mean to be a total geek, but I am very good Liz. I try to avoid it, but you you highlighted me. You know, you know what? You and Taylor Swift are crushing it right now. Writing and doing everything we wish we were doing. Good for you, girl. Thanks. Um, we have some more fan questions coming in. Oh, go on. Money heist? I'm just curious. Which one? Money heist? No, I don't care. James, no, you didn't watch it. I didn't even understand what you were saying. To be honest, <laughs> I was just going to write it out. Money heist. <laughs> so the, the show Money Heist is a Spanish series on Netflix. Actually, it's oh, got to come in, but oh it's no, I haven't even. I will check it out. Thank check you. It out. Yeah, get through the second episode. It's actually it's very good. So, very so nice. go on. Heist. I'll write that down. Go on, Liz. Keep us moving, girl. Great recommendations. No, this is good. Um, let me see. Okay, we have a question from Libra Jen. A question for all. Oh, this is putting you guys on the spot. What was it like to work with the cast of Buffy, your favorite cast or your favorite cast members? None of my favorite cast members are here, but um, <laughs> <laughs> um, oh wait. <laughs> One of my favorite cast members is Dagny, but we very rarely work together on Buffy. Do we ever even have a scene? Dagny? I've never met you. No. Before, so yeah, <laughs> that's the thing. Like, like um, uh, we did a play together. Oh, this is a few cool. years ago, but we did this yeah. original comedy that I forget the name of. And the um, list 87. Yes, the belt. Yes, exactly. And and I remember meeting you and, and going like, I know we've worked together and you're like yeah, yeah. kind of did Buffy together and I was like, <gasps> oh no, like I've forgotten but <laughs> Anyway, we had such a good time, and you were so amazing and such a nice person. I had a time in my life doing that oh, show, doing that show. I'm not either of those things anymore, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for saying that. No, we never worked together on screen in, in Buffy, but obviously we were in the same show. So yeah, it was great to work with you. James is a pro. I always say James is so cool. I remember like backstage, I didn't go on until the second act of the play. And so I would just pace because I'm like, oh, what am I going to do with myself? James sits there playing his video game. And then he's like, oh, I got to go home. And then just walks out there. <laughs> oh, so relaxed. Yeah. So nice. I grew up in front of an audience. I have so, to second yeah. I mean, I did get to work with James on set. And um, <clears throat> I have to say, he was definitely someone to look up to as an actor. Always so, and I'm not saying that because you're here. <laughs> here, I'll shut up for a minute so you can talk about, no. <clears throat> but always so professional, always so prepared, and so genuinely nice, you know? Not politically nice, like yeah. genuinely nice. And, and just a true artist. I, I would just sit there and observe him and be like, wow, like he's amazing. He's great. He's prepared. He's nice. He's so I would I'd probably say, you know, if I could choose anyone to work with again, it would be it would be James. Yeah, James is was really like one of the nicest <laughs> people. <laughs> like honestly. As far as like, yeah. I he was awesome. Mira was great. And you know, we were season seven, Yari like coming in like newbies and everyone was so welcoming with open arms. So it was really refreshing and sweet. I thought totally. James was just okay, really. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't get the right. I could take him or leave him. Right. No, really. <laughs> so no, James, love, love James. And it was, of course, great to watch him uh, in action. You were quite incredible in that, in that role. Um, I don't know about you guys. I mean, I loved everyone I was working with. You know, I connected with them. But a lot of my real friendships happened um, because of this environment, because of the conventions. So Yachty and I became like palsies, like <laughs> sisters. Was it the Buffy Cruise, Yachty? I think that's where we we met each yeah. other. And then Claire Kramer, I became very close with her because of the cruise. And then some of us, Dagny and James, we were in Paris together, which was incredible. Mm -hmm. So Sarah, I haven't, I don't think we've no. ever met that. So <laughs> hi, good to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, for That's me, incredible. Like even like past seasons, we can all like be family in a sense, like the Buffy yeah. thing. I spent so much time, not as much lately, Yachty, but a little bit. But there were a couple years there where we were on like the Buffy tour, where we were going to a lot of cities together, yeah. and 
and really got to, we, you know, we spent a lot of time. And then James Leary, the other James, Clem. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He was like my, you know, we joked around. He was my convention husband because we were at every convention <laughs> together. So we were like the husband and wife, you know, Buffy team. So it was, it's just a cool group of people. I mean, for myself, we, we've, I mean, here we are 25 years later. Yeah. Cause like when you we're know, doing the we, show, A, we're all super tired because it, we work like 12 to 20 hours a day. Yeah, so it's like so. zombie fest. And then, for me, anyway, there was the pressure of this is another amazing masterpiece script. And am I going to screw it up? You know, mm -hmm. am I am I going to come out of today thinking that 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 this is going to play better on the page? I always felt that this is a funnier ever, show. Did you ever, James, did you ever feel like you didn't you, you didn't nail it? Because, I mean, your performance. Is I, I don't think like I ever did. I, I, I always oh, wow. felt and still feel that the show is, is a better read than it is to watch. Like, because, mm -hmm. and I, you know, you've got to forgive yourself because on a, on a television schedule, you know, it's very quick and we're all doing our best. And, and I tell that the whole cast had the same worry. Um, am I going to live up to these words? You know, they were, they were and, or am I going to let them down somehow? And, you know, we got most of it, but I, I would always like I'd look at the, at the sides, the mini script that they give you every morning after we finish the scene. And I just kind of flip over it. And I'd always notice like, oh, we missed that beat. That was a hilarious mm. beat. I laughed out loud when I read the script and we didn't get. OK, well, just move on. Let's try again. Yeah. <laughs> so it is really great when that pressure is off to hang out with you guys at conventions. It's like, well, we just have to be, you know, moderately nice to people today. It's not so much pressure. So I can get to know you. Yeah. I love it. That's, um, I mean, it's great that you guys are getting the same fan experience that we are and attending the conventions and it just makes it an overall even better experience. Um, mm. We have a few people asking, I think the first person to ask it was Debbie Morgan. Um, are you shocked at how far Buffy has come and how much it's impacted your life? And I know that question probably get asked a lot, but I'll say even I was reintroduced into Buffy again in college in a 400 level philosophy course. I don't know how I had to take that, but we studied Buffy the Vampire Slayer and the themes oh. and how it was with like philosophy and all of this. And so I think it's just amazing how this show hits people at so many different stages of their lives and even personally for you guys. So have you, I mean, did you really think that it would transcend into what it is today? Absolutely no. <laughs> no. I had no idea. I had no idea. I mean, no. Well, wasn't it, I mean, it's, it's gone even like significantly more like popular, like as the years have even gone on, but like even in season seven, I felt like it was a popular show. Like, I yeah, think, no, for sure. if I remember quite correctly, I don't know, but um, but yeah. So I kind of knew a little bit that it, Buffy was like a big deal. Um, but yeah, no, I didn't really realize. Like, you you don't think about that sort of thing when you're doing it. You just go in to do the work and do as good of a job as you can do, and and hope that people respond. So that's what you do. Well, I remember for me, I came in at the end of season one um, and the show hadn't been on the air yet. So I had no idea what to expect. I just read the script and especially my character, I loved my character. I just thought, oh, she's so well-written, so sassy and spunky and cat and mouse banter. And I just was so excited. And so I got on set and um, my first scene was in the library, I think, where I tell him, you know, about going back to the Middle Ages or something along that. I don't remember exactly. Oh no, it was the guy, it was the guy, the, the nerdy guy who had the computer and we were talking about computers versus TV. Anyway, oh, yeah. story short, that was the scene, my first scene. And um, long story short, you know, I got on set, we started to go and I, it was an incredible experience to, to read the page and then see the cast. And to just know, like, wow, Sarah, Allison, Nikki, like everyone, charisma, like there was just such a fit. And to hear the script, James, like you're saying, to hear it come to life and to see how everyone just like was in the pocket of these characters, I knew mm -hmm. right away, like, wow, this is really special. Like, I don't know what's going to happen, but this is really special. Special. The casting was so <laughs> extraordinary. The writing so extraordinary. So... And, you know, and here we are, it still has legs. It's fun to watch. You know, a lot of times when we first started doing all of these conventions, you know, we had a certain age group that were coming in. And then this next round, we have like all of their kids. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's definitely yeah. crossed a lot of generations. Mm -hmm. 
for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I remember. Go ahead. Oh no, Dagny, you take it. Take it. Oh, well, I think for me personally, doing an episode and a half, really, of the show, that's all <laughs> I did. If you would have told me that 25 years later, someone would be have a bobblehead of me because of that, <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> I didn't even. Know I want that bobblehead. I know. Oh I didn't know. Do you have that? Can you show us? There was one in France, and I was like, "Is that me?" They're like, "Yeah." Oh. I was like, "Oh my god!" That's when you say, <laughs> "Oh my god, I need that. I want that so bad." I'm a pop boy. When did this happen? And then they go find. Oh, and then hopefully that's on the floor, and you can get one. I've gotten so many spike dolls for that way. Oh my god, I love this! And then suddenly the next day they're like, "I bought it for you." Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I have a whole shelf of these things in, really? my, in my little study. Yeah. My little, little pan my little out. Are you in the study? Figure. Pan out. I'm no, no, I'm not. Collection. I'd have to go in the other room. No. It's you know, you it's spike, you know, it's plastic spikes. It's it's fun. Um yeah, I, I was a Star Trek fan uh uh pretty early. Uh, in the very early 70s. And I remember going to some of the first conventions for Star Trek and talking with the, the fans about how we had already seen the show. We knew what the lines were, uh, and we still wanted to go back to that world. That there was something about that world that we just liked to be in. After we knew what the da- how the danger is going to get resolved, we knew all the, the lines and everything. And I remember... I think in season two, I came in and we were still shooting in 16 millimeter, which was uh, a very small film stock. Wow. Like if you guys watch, if the audience watches season one and two, you can tell that some of the colors are kind of bleached out and some of the, some of the contrast is a little too much because we were shooting in, in such little film stock. So we, there wasn't a lot of money that was being paid, but I remember thinking this show could be like Star Trek where it's just mm-hmm. so interesting and so uh funny and charming that you would just want to go back even after you know what's going to happen and uh and i and i kind of sense that it, it was possible that we might be talking about this for a few years yeah that's correct <laughs> a few <Wow>. years <laughs> that, uh, that reminds me james at a wizard world a few years ago you told a story about how did you see the first screening of a star wars a new hope yes i did uh, 1979 at the North Point Theater in San Francisco. It was about nine months before the, the movie came out. And uh, wow. George put up a sign-up list at my, uh, at my uh, high school at the theater com- the, in the theater. And uh, I remember thinking, George? oh, this Are is... Are you and George like this? It's just George? Me and George, yeah. George. <laughs> we come from the same hometown. Yeah, jo- George. Uh, we grew, you know, grew up in the same hometown. Out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I met him. I met him. I went to his house. Uh, and I don't have time to tell the whole story. Did but yeah, really? so. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. How yeah. Cool um, Sorry. To go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I remember, I was like, wait a minute. I think he saw like the first screening ever of A New Hope. Yeah. 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 And we gave a 15 minute standing ovation. And apparently, George and the other producers were up in the projection booth crying because it was the first time they ever got a positive reaction because it was the first time they showed it to anyone with all the special effects and everything was kind of done. And up until that point, everyone was telling them this is just uh, horrible, you know, because they didn't have the music, they didn't have the special effects and they were showing it to their friends and their friends were telling them they were, they were insane. And uh, finally I I, I got the cake baked and uh, yeah. So that's cool. I also saw the premiere of the matrix in Hollywood. Thank you. So. (laughs) Nerd King because, over here, I love it. Because of Buffy, I got invited to that. So. Dang, I didn't get invited because of Buffy. <laughs> <Am I invited? laughs> well, we do have, Robia, we do have a fan question for you from Tara1016, and I quote, if Jenny wasn't so rudely and heartbreakingly torn from us, where would you have liked to have seen Jenny's journey go next? Others, or any any other storyline you would have liked to have seen your character to go? That last oh gosh, out. I mean, so many. First of all, I would have loved to see, you know, the Giles, Jenny, best couple, best, not best couple, but I would say best, best Giles love interest. I'd like to see that go a little further. Um, but I would say I was really sad to not be a part of the musical. 
Hmm. Um, you know, for my character, I think it would have been a really good opportunity to do like a Chicago Catherine Zeta Jones type, like jumping on the desks and doing almost like a hot for teacher, but maybe not kind of dirty, but you know what I mean? <laughs> like a hot for teacher number, right? Like Catherine yeah. Zeta action. Cause you know, I was a professional dancer for many, many years. Oh, so the fact that I feel like that got pulled out from under me is mm. something I'll never, I'll never fully recover from. Wow. Yeah. Can you imagine? Wow. You're, see, James, you're, <laughs> James is having been. a picture right now. Yeah. Cause I was thinking that we, the only people that did the musicals, the people that didn't do musicals. So we were yeah. all kind of like trying. <laughs> I wouldn't say that I could really have sung it as well as maybe, you know, I'm not a great, I'm an okay singer, but I could have danced the heck out of it. Wow. Smoky, smoky classroom, jumping on the desk, like. (laughs) 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 It would have been awesome. Putting the kids in, pushing them to the side. Come on. Like this would have been (laughs) awesome, right? (laughs) Reunion episode. There you go. Yeah, Yeah, I hope that answered your question, girl. All right, we have so many other fan questions. Oh my goodness, where do I even start? They're like flooding in. Oh, this is a good one. Um, from Tim Ryan, a question for everybody. If Buffy was still on the air right now, what show currently airing do you think would make for a fantastic crossover event? Any of the ladies? Yari or Sarah? Hmm. You look like you're stewing on something. Don't ask the gal who a doesn't cross over a thing. I'm slightly confused by the question. So across, like now they have, um, like on the CW network, like Flash and like, uh, yeah. Oh, right? like, a, like a spinoff. Or is that what you're talking about? Like, you do a spin-off, know, like characters go into both worlds, right? Yeah. Right. Like a Buffy and Angel. Yeah. How, yeah. How Buffy and Angel did that. Yeah. I, I mean, they movie. were like, I mean, a whole like, I don't know, actually. I really don't know. Yeah, I was gonna say know, like, <laughs> like, going off with like, marketing major players or something like that, but obviously that's just like because I was a slayer. So yeah. right. I would have loved to see this is not on the air anymore, but it would have been great to do a crossover with True Blood and just yeah. have the vampires yeah, of, yeah, yeah. of Buffy like demoralize the vampires of, of True Blood with superior dialogue. And then kick their ass. I love and it. it. Just seems like we'd be cracking all these amazing jokes. And they'd be all like, "Oh man, I'm yes. not very funny." And then we would attack them. <laughs> yeah. just, I love that. I agree but, with James 100. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Hannah would be good. Hannah uh, is a oh, is a Netflix that. show, uh, and she's kind of like a slayer. She's young, and yeah. she got experimented on with chemicals and stuff like that. So that's why she has superpowers. But it would be it would be great for Buffy and him to like get together. Huh. Yeah. Cool. That's a cool question. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, sorry. Sorry, I didn't answer it very well. Good thing James. I think it's called I know, Hannah. Right? I hope it's called it's Hannah. Hannah. I'm watching it. Yeah. It's, is it, it Hannah? Is called, it is called Hannah. I mean, I haven't seen yeah. it. I it yeah, that's a good show. Hannah. Yeah, they have a cool promo image. It's on there all the time. Um, okay, we have so many. Ooh. Oh, uh, Jeannie Four would like to know Did you have any input about the development or direction of your character, or was it just like <laughs> you said that's what happened? So, uh, I was the one who suggested that I iron my jeans and label eggs. No, I didn't. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Someone else came up with that awesomeness. Yeah, no, I, I didn't know. No input. I used to try, and then and, and I, would, I would say my idea to, to Joss, and he would go, James, that's a really good idea. That's great. Oh and then there's it. me. Yeah. And then there's me, he would say. Yeah. <laughs> say that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And he was right. You know, my ideas, they, they didn't suck. They were actually a you know, little interesting. But then, they, then what would come down the pike would be infinitely more interesting than, than what I wanted to happen. So, yeah. Um, thank God he didn't take any of my ideas. We wouldn't be sitting here. He used those exact words, and and then there's me, and then oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah, that's pretty funny. <laughs> mm, I don't. I mean, I, the only thing I ever su- suggested I put out there was that my tongue was pierced, and he used it. <laughs> but um, do you remember that? Why did you suggest like- that? I thought it was-, was it because your tongue was already pierced? Because because my tongue was pierced and 
I liked having my tongue pierced and I thought it it would be a little uh punk rock. <laughs> it's like and that'd be fun. I thought it'd be fun to to see how, you know, that could be written in or I mean because of who Kennedy was and it's just it was just fun. That's all, you know. <laughs> it's uh why not? Um, why not? But I never yeah. knew anything about my character. I mean, I I didn't know. I had no idea. I had no idea even as a matter of fact, the, what I auditioned for never was actually filmed. It was completely different scenes, completely different dialogue. So, um, no, I was, all, was always surprised. I actually thought I was only doing one episode anyway. Like, Yeah, you know, same. And I had no idea I was going to come back, like, I don't know, what yeah. was it, like 10 episodes later or something like that? Mm-hmm. Eight episodes later and be a slayer? Yeah. No yeah. idea. And kill a vampire. It's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. If they would have told you that, you would have held out for more money. I know, right? I mean, don't tell Sarah that she's going to be a slayer. <laughs> That's why they didn't tell me. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Would have known. We have some more fan questions coming in. I'm Sandy B. And this is Fariari. Did you feel any pressure being Willow's love interest after Tara died? That was such an epic. Um, mm. That's a good question. No, because I, I didn't know the extent of her previous relationship. I hadn't watched the show, which probably was a good thing because, um, you know, I didn't take everything to heart. I would hear comments. I would not very nice comments, um, on, on my character, but, but I can't, I can't, you know, I don't, I can't, I just, I didn't, I'm glad that I didn't have that pressure. I'm glad that I didn't know the history because I don't know if it would have changed, you know, how I, how I portrayed her. I'm not sure, but, um, but now I do. Now I've watched it and now I go, Oh shit. I'm so glad I had no idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love, I love uh, it. I love it. And I love, and I love the relationship and I think, and I, and I completely empathizing and completely understand people's uh reaction to kennedy the good ones the bad ones all of them i'm I'm completely understand so i don't take anything personally but it's a good question (laughs) fans get get very passionate i'm sure james has no idea what that's like with (laughs) well i was gonna say you know like like it that's the thing that's the thing that happens when you're able to get the audience passionate about the materials they're gonna have yeah. passionate reactions both ways you know yeah uh michelle trachtenberg faced a lot of that too yeah you know? mm-hmm. uh, a lot of negative reaction uh uh but at the end of the day what you're hoping for is you're not boring people you know like mm-hmm. uh they're engaged mm-hmm. and uh yeah y- yeah yeah i got a i got a different kind of passion <laughs> I just I just hid I hid from the world the whole time you were filming. If I had the blonde hair, I was just I was in a car or in my apartment or on set. I was like I I cannot deal with this. He didn't like I, like wear beanies and like you know I don't know go out. Public. No, really hid. No, oh. I just I just didn't go out. <laughs> well, we were working most of the time anyway. So anyway, um, yeah. But on hiatus, um, change your hair probably. Yeah, I guess so. I would keep moving. Like if I Mm -hmm. if I if I stopped in one location out of doors, then a crowd would start to form, and then it Mm -hmm. got it got very passionate and very excited. And so I would always be kind of in motion. Like I would roll. I rollerbladed a lot along Mm -hmm. uh, uh, along the beach near my apartment. Uh, And if I was going at twenty five miles an hour, I was fine. Mm -hmm. (laughs) <laughs> you're fine or you would die but it was weird and like uh, other people i think would probably enjoy that kind of attention and for some reason it just scared the crap out i was very it was weird because you know, going through joss's script you know i just felt increasingly vulnerable more and more vulnerable as the seasons went by i feel like he was stripping away and showing you know, because Joss was getting to know me, and he was he was showing the audience more about me, in a in uh, uh, in a in a you know in a metaphorical way and all. Um, but he was using what he was seeing in me for the character. Like like William uh, is probably closer to me 
than Spike, you know? And I remember he, he said that, oh, Spike is just the ultimate poser. He became a vampire so he can get away with it. But he's just, he's just, you know, like, I'm just like the sensitive poet guy who suddenly becomes a vampire. I'm like, I can, I can be the badass now, but that's not your real instinct. And I remember being so uncomfortable with Joss exposing that, mm. exposing that I was sensitive or, or vulnerable at all. I was really enjoying the pose of, of, of the, you know, the first spike. Uh, and and I guess I just, as the seasons went on, I, I felt like they've really seen me. They, they really know me more than I would probably reveal to a friend. You know, wow. only the best friends would see that stuff. And, and so I was hiding. Yeah. That's what made the show. Did you ever confront Joss? Why are you exposing me like that? <laughs> no, I knew, you know, that's called really good writing. You know, like you can't fault that. And, uh, you know, it was. It, it, I, I recognize that that's going to happen when you're, when you're dealing with with a, a with a writer of that caliber. Is he's not going to go for the safe stuff. He's not going to make everyone feel comfortable the whole time. He's going to put you through hell. You know, like all the best artists do. <laughs> I think that's a gift. I think that's great. Yeah, yeah. I love the show. Um, we have. Uh, we're just going to do one more question before we kind of do a round robin from you guys, saying um, your thanks and everything to the fans. Um, this is a serious one. It's from Savish and Rose, and they would like to know from each of you: Does pineapple belong on pizza? No, Hell yes. absolutely not. No. Hell yes. Oh. No way. I don't what like pineapple. What did pineapple, pineapple ever do so. to you that it gets <laughs> so much hate? Damn, can't we all get along here? Pineapple belong in like uh, like <gasps> drinks and smoothies and <laughs> this is this a buffy related question? Is that right? <laughs> it is? It is. Okay, because I was like, is that what a random thing to ask somebody? Okay. <laughs> Which yeah. is great. It's refreshing. No. <laughs> I like you know. It's my favorite pizza, <laughs> but I'll take any kind of pizza. So if there's you like pineapple and pizza? I, it wouldn't be my first choice, but I'll eat it right. with some yeah. with some salty ham thing, and then the yeah, we'll all eat it. But yes, I don't think exactly. <laughs> salty <laughs> meat and sweet fruit is awesome. To get it's it back. awesome. Yeah, Sarah and I <laughs> like. Mm, mm. My mom forced me to drink pineapple juice as a kid, and so I've been scarred for the rest of my life. No oh. pineapples for me. Ever. Oh. Oh. You have deep pineapple wounds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that. lima beans for me. Oh, I love yeah. lima beans. I don't. <laughs> for me, I'm me. Italian. I'll eat whatever. What's mm -hmm. yours, Yadi? What? Wait, where's green yours? Green I used to pick them out of the rice, and and I just I just don't like. Oh, them. green peas. Yeah. Yeah. I love them. Other than that, I can eat. I'll I can take eat all them. your guys' leftovers. Put them on a plate. Serve them up to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Italian. I'll eat whatever. I'm I'm Italian. I love it. I love it. Well, well, let's do a quick round robin of you guys um, just giving a little shout out, maybe what you're working on, or just saying thanks to the fans before we head out. We'll do. Why is it over already? Yeah. Uh, we'll do this really fast. Oh, Too fast. fast. Really fast. Who's up first, James? Mr. We talked to Sure, uh, guys. Uh, hi out there. I'm so glad that we are here together. Uh, we we're all kind of not as together as we have been before and finding ways to stay connected is keeping me sane. And so I'm so glad that we're all here now. Um, and, uh, what am I working on now? Uh, not getting COVID. Yeah. I'm working on that. Uh, I'm waiting to see, uh, if DC comics will green light a comic book series that I've had in my brain for a long time. Uh, mm -hmm. we, 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 in a, a writing partner, we, we did it. I, what I think is a really good pitch and, the, and our contact at DC said that there was a good chance it was going to get uh, picked up, so to speak. And we're just waiting, 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 waiting to see what the word is. Um, and then, uh, I'm going in to record another book on tape, the new Dre Dresden. Uh, we've waited like nine years or I don't know how many years but years for a new Dresden book. And, and then Jim Butcher, who writes the series, drops two books right away, like boom, boom. So I read the first one, and it's a, the second one is a continuation of that book, and I'm going to go into the studio and record that. So Awesome. Wow. You have a lot going on. I yeah. love it. You yeah. always have a lot going on. It's great. <laughs> I guess so. I don't know. <laughs> thanks for sharing. I, Do I leave I, now? Know. Is there one you're waiting for thanks. me? Thanks. really nice. I really no, you hang up. Just hang up for just another minute. We'll round robin with the with the ladies. Yeah, good. 
I want to hear. All right. It's so nice to talk to people. I don't want to leave. I know. <laughs> but here, Dagny, you do you do your sound off. Does it want to say anything to the fans or sure? Yeah, you I mean, here go, Dagny. To see people, but um, you know, I'm so appreciative of of everybody that always reaches out to me. All the fans, every fan I've ever met, um, it, it, the different conventions have just been amazing, and I just feel very fortunate to to meet them and hear their stories, and and I'm always flattered and. Um, it's unbelievable to me after all this time with just such a small part that I was of such a big uh, series that people uh, that I brought joy to people's lives. It's just so cool. So I really just uh, thank you. And um, yeah, I've been like James just trying not to get sick. Um, <laughs> trying, to stay sane, trying not to get too fat. Um, <laughs> <laughs> are like, you baking what? are you one of the bakers and then now my pants don't fit and I'm like dang it <laughs> so um yeah so uh, and then I've been writing I'm, I'm a playwright I'm a um published and um produced playwright around the world so I've been really busy I've actually had a lot of my plays uh produced now on um now we're going virtual but they I had a few of them that luckily squeezed in some productions beginning this year in New York so that was good and then I've been working on a book so I have been busy uh, finished I, it needs more work but before i i send it out but hopefully the next time i see you all you know some sometime it'll be published and out there but i'm really excited about it that's awesome, awesome. thank you thank for you. sharing Gosh. who's next up ar would you like to go sure <laughs> it's really nice to hear how how everyone's keeping busy and being so productive i love it it's 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 really good um, I really enjoyed this, guys. I love each and every one of you. I've met every single one of you, except you, Liz. I don't know if I've, I've met mm. you in person before. I'm not sure. But maybe. Probably at a, a Wizard World convention. Oh, maybe. So I have a relationship with each and one of you, and I, I treasure that. I love these moments. I love that we can continue to do this, even if we're not physically next to each other. Um, you know, it gives me a lift. It, it brings It brings, like good energy and positive vibes. And um, I thank all the fans out there that were able to join us. I hope we can do it again. I feel very grateful. Like you said, 25 years later, here we are and we continue to, uh, you know, cause an effect out there. And that's really wonderful. And um, it's great that we can continue to, to, I'm, I'm, I have, I'm going to, I'll be doing a film in a couple of months. So that's going to be fun. Um, I'll give more information. I, I read just a little blurb about that. I want to hear more. That sounds like it's going to be an incredible role. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you more once, once you know, more is, is, is um, publicized or, because everything's kind of on hold right now. And, you know, yeah. I don't really like to talk so much until things are kind of, yeah. you know, like in progress or, you know, you know how it is. But I'm excited. And um, uh, God, other than that, I don't know if I'm gonna like move to France again if things don't pick up in LA or where my life is going, but it's an adventure and um, you know, I take it as it comes and I'm busy with my kids, everything's good. I'm healthy, try not to get COVID. I traveled a lot lately, so I've done, I've done pretty well. I've been on a lot of airplanes, <laughs> but I've been very responsible. In fact, I think I was the only one actually wearing one of those big plastic cap, you know, masks. Yeah. Three airports um, to get to Dublin, Ireland, and I was the only one with that thing with the face cover. Um, I don't know. I just it just uh, I think I can't, I can't wait till everything gets back to normal. But I just wish people would just would just um, you know just take whether whatever you believe. I respect all all decisions, but just for um, to make others comfortable or whatnot. And and I've been successful and I made it all the, all the way to France and uh, I can't wait to see my kids, but I will definitely be uh, in touch to let you guys know wh what I'm doing next. For now, it's the film. And awesome. thank you all for being here. <laughs> that's it, I talk a lot. <laughs> oh, that's why we're here. Uh, Sarah, okay. yeah, would one of you ladies like to Go next. Uh, sure. Hi. Yeah. I, uh, this has been really awesome. Um, it's nice to meet you, Dagny. I haven't met you before. Oh. Or Robia. So nice to meet you too. Or Liz. I haven't met you either. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not, I don't want to leave anyone out. Um, but no, this has been great. And uh, just, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I love doing anything right now. That's not, um, even though I love my kid, like, 
taking care of a toddler who can't really talk to me very much. So, and that's kind of what I've been doing um, is uh, staying inside the house, not going to any playgrounds or anything, swim lessons, nothing. That's been kind of uh, a bummer, a real bummer. Um, and also for her and her social skills. So I don't know. It's, it's, but we're trying, we're, we're surviving and you know, uh, that's kind of what I've been doing is being a mom and trying to stay sane and watching a lot of TV in the background and yeah, um, trying not to get COVID like everybody else and wearing a mask, please wear a mask. And yeah, so I don't know, scary times right now, but hopefully we can come out of this and get back and see all the fans in person again, because that would be nice. Um, but thanks for watching and tuning in and asking questions and yeah. Thanks. Sarah, really quickly. Yeah. Um, I, I watched a documentary about this um, South American uh, uh, people that were just kind of discovered, like they, they decided to become known mm -hmm. and in their culture, the leaders and the, the shaman of their cultures, they're raised for the first few years in a cave and they're not let out of the cave and they're taught everything by a loving teacher and parent in that cave. And then when they get uh, to be like nine or 10 years older, they, they come out of the cave and they say that they never forget the beauty of the world because they finally got out of the cave. So maybe wow. your kid is destined to be a shaman. Oh. What's, what's the name of that documentary? Yeah, what is the name of that? I don't you remember. Watch that one. <laughs> well, then I I'll have to like Google every Google search everything you just told me, and hopefully yeah. it comes up. <laughs> That's interesting. Are you really quick? Are you in LA, Sarah? I'm in LA. Yeah. Yep. In LA. So it's <laughs> kind of bad here right now, but you know. Mm. Well, you're crushing it, Mama. I have a two year old at home as well, and it's. It's just, you said you had two under two. I do. Just that's keep that's the, just on, crazy. the wine poured. And that's oh, that's what I've been. Yeah, yeah, sorry. I mean, I'm not an alcoholic or anything. But yeah, keep the Thanks. wine poured. <laughs> watch some TV. <laughs> wow. I love it. All right, Robia, what about you? Last but not least. All right, last but not least. Well, this has been wonderful. I'm just always honored to be a part of this show that I know has impacted so many lives so deeply and um, made you laugh and, um, and more than just that, more than just entertainment. I, you know, all the years I've met fans, it's just been incredible to hear how much this show, uh, how important it had, had been for so many people to um, take them through some really rough times. You know, whether it was a loss or um, some kind of trauma in their life, this show for some reason gave people hope. So my hope and prayer is that in this time, in these tough times, that the show is also able to um, give you something to hold on to, to get through what we're all corporately dealing with. So it's been great to connect. Um, some of you might know that I actually walked away from acting many, many years ago, but through just a surprising turn of events, I wound up doing a movie last year that was in theaters and that's streaming right now on Amazon Prime. So if you have Amazon Prime, you might want to watch my movie. It's called Unplanned. And I play a pretty intense character in it. So that was kind of neat to be back in my acting, you know, in this part of me that had been dormant for so long to kind of get those, those creative juices flowing again. And now it seems like that door is, is open back in my life in addition to all the other stuff I'm doing. So I just got cast in a new movie. It's called Old From Darkness. And I filmed that in a month or two. And uh, Unplanned was based on a true story. It's a very powerful film. And this movie is also based on a true story um, mm. uh, on human trafficking. So it's, it's really going to be an intense wow. story. That's important that this kind of information gets out there. So we, we learn more about these types of topics and are informed. But anyway, I'm just kind of glad to be back in the mix, back in the acting world. So thank you, guys. It's been a pleasure. And um, I hope we can um, connect more and see each other again. Awesome. Thank you guys so much, everyone. Let's give a big likes, hug. This has been awesome. Round of applause for Jake Marsters. Thank you guys. Thank you for this. Thank you guys so much. Bye bye. You're lovely. Bye. Hey, this is Alex Malari Jr., and you are watching Phantom Spotlight. Be sure to hit that like button, share, and subscribe. Your emperor commands it. Thanks for watching.